Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be discussing how the Koenigsegg Direct Drive system works in the Koenigsegg Regera. And actually it's pretty straightforward and simple how this design works, uh, surprisingly or not. But anyways, looking at it, so here we have the two rear wheels of the vehicle. You've got a battery which is placed kind of towards the front but in the center, uh, probably between you and the passenger of the Koenigsegg. And then here you have a 5 liter twin turbo V8 producing 820 kilowatts or about 1100 horsepower, an insane amount of power. Now behind that engine actually, or towards the front of the vehicle, you do have a 160 kilowatt motor or about 215 horsepower. And this is also the starter for the engine. So that's hooked up to the crankshaft with this engine and then the engine sends its power through a hydraulic coupling. Sounds very similar to a locking torque converter as it does have the ability to lock up. Power is then sent to the rear differential which has a final drive ratio of 2.85 to 1 and then towards the outer wheel. Now on each axle you do have an additional electric motor each producing 180 kilowatts or about 240 horsepower sending power to the rear wheels. So what is the process? How does this work? Well, getting started from a stop, these two rear motors are going to be doing all of the acceleration to get you started. Then as your speed starts to increase, the engine RPM starts to increase and this hydraulic coupling starts to close up. So this third motor is now aiding in acceleration because you're passing some of the torque from this motor through that hydraulic coupling to the rear wheels. Then around 30 miles per hour or a little bit after you reach 1000 RPM, this hydraulic coupling can close up. And once it's closed up, then you're directly driving from the engine to the rear wheels. So really the only difference here between this and let's say a different uh, form of car, whether it's hybrid or not, is that between this hydraulic coupling and this final drive is that you would have a transmission put in there. And then they've added, you know, this hybrid system on top of it. So the benefit of taking out that transmission, first of all, you're taking out some weight, but let's compare it to a parallel hybrid system. Well, you don't have that transmission with the efficiency losses through it. And if you were to compare it to a series hybrid system, well, then you're not converting that energy multiple times from mechanical to electrical back to mechanical in order to power the car. So it's more efficient in that sense. So let's just do a little bit of math to check and find out what the top speed is because this engine does lock up to the rear wheels and you can use the gearing to determine what your top speed is since you do have that direct drive. So the first thing we need to know is the wheel circumference. And I looked at some photos of the car from Geneva and you could see that the rear tires were 345 over 30 R20 tires. So if we take 345 millimeters, multiply that by the ratio, that's what the 30 represents, and then divide that by 25.4 millimeters in an inch, that gives us a profile of 4.075 inches. Now to find our diameter, we've got 20 plus 2 times 4.075, that gives us a wheel diameter and tire diameter of 28.15 inches. So we multiply that by pi and we get 88.4358 inches, that's the circumference of this tire. Now let's find out what the wheel RPM is. So we know that our engine RPM red line is 8,250. So we simply divide that by the final drive ratio. That gives us 2,894.7 RPM. So now we can find out what our top speed is. So speed is equal to this number here, this RPM multiplied by 60 minutes in an hour. That way we'll get revolutions per hour rather than revolutions per minute. Then we're multiplying that by the number of inches, the distance this wheel travels with one revolution, its circumference, so 88.4358 divided by 12 inches in a foot multiplied by 5,200 feet in a mile. So that will give us uh, miles per hour once we multiply this all out rather than, you know, these uh, inches per minute. So we have a final speed calculated from this of 242 0.4 miles per hour. So why isn't that 249 miles per hour? Well, it's not that far off, honestly. So if we were to have a 0.75 inch difference in diameter of those wheels, then that would accommodate that and we'd be at 249 miles per hour. And one other thing, you know, let's say this is the exact dimension uh, and this is the exact circumference of those tires, 88.4358. Well, when they're spinning at 240 some miles per hour, they're gonna kind of expand out from all those radial Gs. And so that could accommodate that 0.75 inches, uh, which would make it up to the 249 miles per hour. So hopefully you have some insight into how the Koenigsegg Direct Drive works. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.